Ethiopia floriculture sector lures foreign investors. And Nigerian crowned Muslim beauty in contest aiming to empower women. Those are the main headlines in this news edition. Hello, welcome to ETV News. I'm Shemad al -Islamam. Ministry of Agriculture says Ethiopia has been luring foreign investors in floriculture and horticulture sectors. The ministry has held talks with um, American flower buyers and wholesalers on ways to boost earnings from the sector. Sadaf Mohamed Sani reports. With agriculture accounting for 3% of the GDP, Ethiopian government is paying considerable attention by channeling 50% of its expenditure to the sector. With the aim of transforming the sector through growth and transformation plan, flour is currently becoming the main export item. To this end, as well as attracting many investors, buyer companies with high potential from Canada and the United States of America were in addis to consult with the Ministry of Agriculture on ways of importing flowers. Speaking at the joint meeting, Minister of Agriculture Tafarad Darabo spoke that the sector is witnessing the presence of large number of investors owing to the due attention given by the government. Because of the attention given by the government today, we can witness the presence of over 120 high-tech commercial agriculture farms in Ethiopia engaged in the production and export of flowers, fruits and vegetables. More than half of the total investors we have in the industry are foreign direct investors. Currently we produce 2.26 billion stems of different varieties of flowers. He also assured the buyer companies that the flower supply will be abundant fulfilling their demand for quality. Steve Katondo is from Delaware Valley Floral Group Company, which is based in New Jersey. His company has already started importing flour from Ethiopia. According to Katondo, raises interesting factors that attracted his company to engage in importation of flowers. We're on this wonderful trip to Ethiopia, um, where we found um, some really interesting products and farms with high quality and professionalism um, and good attention to detail. So it's been very interesting. Ethiopia's flour is mainly exported to European market. According to Alam Grima, director of Ethiopian Horticulture Development Agency, had this to say. We have to widen the scope of our market since we are in need of selling large volume of flowers. Beyond that, widening the destination of our flowers is indispensable to look for better price. So the coming of this bias is part of the effort to widen the market. According to recent statistics, Ethiopia is the second largest flower exporter in Africa and a fourth in the world. Djibouti has launched construction of a railway project to link the Red Sea nation to neighboring Ethiopia. The new Djibouti-Ethiopia railway line was launched recently during the third meeting of the Joint Djibouti-Ethiopia Coordination Commission on the project. Habib Mohammed has more. The Ethiopia Djibouti Railway Project Joint Ministerial Commission has evaluated the current performance of the construction of the Ethiopia Djibouti Railway Project that is being carried out in both countries. Ethiopian Ministry of Transport Work Nagabayo during the meeting said the historic railway route is being constructed in a way it ensures the renaissance and mutual benefit of the two countries. These two projects are historical projects that will change the socio-economic landscape of our two sisterly countries. As everyone said, the projects are game changers. Djibouti's transport minister, Musa Ahmed, said the railway line will facilitate access to different markets in the region and will also link Djibouti to South Sudan through Ethiopia. He also speaks of 100-kilometer Djibouti section of the railway construction project. I have the satisfaction to announce that this morning the contractor CCECC has started the construction activity on the ground in the area of Nagar. We hope that for the next meeting organized in Djibouti, 
we will be able to visit the progress of the activities on the site. A 650-kilometer Dawali Sabata railway project, which is Ethiopian section, is well in progress, and 20% of its construction has so far been completed. Construction of the 100-kilometer railway, which belongs to Djibouti, has just been commenced in Djibouti. Ethiopia's progress in constructing section paved the way for Djibouti to launch its belonging. According to the Ethiopian Railway Corporation director, Dr. Geta Hamburu, the new railway line will dramatically change the economic condition of both countries. The train's transportation Ethiopia will see inability to transport about 3,000 tons of commodities within a single passage. This is equal with the capacity of what some 2,500 trucks are carrying. When the construction of the new railway line is fully realized, it will speed up the nation's economic boom. The railway project, which costs 600 million US dollars, has been financed by the China Exim Bank, while the Chinese Civil Engineering Construction Corporation is supervising the project. Work and I called on all concerned stakeholders to work hand in glove for the realization of the project. Djibouti's director for railway company, Mohamed Robleh, expressed his belief that the construction will be completed within two years' time by the Djibouti side, and the project inside Ethiopia will also see completion within the intended two years' period. You're watching ETV News. Addis Ababa City Roads Authority said construction of the east-west Addis Ababa Road is well in progress. The construction of the road and has consumes 2.5 billion baht. Paying a visit to the construction site, Authority's General Manager, Fekada Haile, Engineer Fekada Haile, said the construction is being speeded up in line with schedule. An 8.1 kilometer long Meganaya Koka Road, whose construction was launched last May, has shown better performance, Engineer Fekada said. According to the general manager, construction of most of the roads being carried out in the city is believed to be completed in June 2014. The engineer said, part, apart from the east west, the authority has finalized preparation to launch construction of North South Railroad. Ethiopolis Trade Forum is to be held in Addis Ababa the coming Monday. Briefing journalists here on Thursday, Polish Ambassador to Ethiopia, Joe Jakowski, and Secretary General of the Ethiopian Chamber of Commerce and Sectoral Associations, Gasha Debeba, said the forum aims to further the existing trade ties between the two countries. Delegations comprising of Polish high government officials, trade council representatives, and companies engaged in information technology, medical, agriculture, and energy sectors are expected to take part at the forum. The interlocutors said the trade forum would create an opportunity to raise Polish investors' awareness on the conducive investment climate and human labor in Ethiopia. Conditions would also be created to enable Ethiopian investors to work with Polish counterparts, particularly on technology arena, and they underlined. Ethiopia is said to be on the right track to produce HIV-free generation. The Ministry of Health says activities should focus more on minimizing vulnerability to build up on registered uh, successes. The remark came at a national forum being held in Arba Minj to evaluate the 2012-2013 performance in fighting HIV-AIDS. The report indicated new infections with the virus have decreased to 90%. Speaking on the occasion, Health State Minister Dr. Kabadorgo said efforts should f further be strengthened to scale up achievements observed in fighting HIV. U.S. President's Emergency Plan for a AIDS Relief, PEPFAR Country Representative Carmela Abata, underlined Ethiopia has become one of the 25 African countries on the way to achieving HIV free generation. This indicates the country is likely to be successful in meeting the target, she said. Intra Health International applauded Ethiopia for achieving Millennium Development Goals number 4, reducing child mortality. 
The organization has marked its 10 years of partnership to Ethiopia and honored outstanding health workers in Addis Ababa on Wednesday. Uh, Papi Gaye, Intra Health International President, reaffirms his commitment to collaborate at levels to help improve the health of Ethiopian communities. The government of Ethiopia has reduced communicable diseases and improved immunization, use of contraceptives, and health seeking behavior, the president added. He also said the nation has registered significant progress in health promotion and disease prevention by implementing health extension program across the country. He also recommended a lot has to be done to increase the access of the accesses of various health services including maternal, newborn and child health among others. Lydia Tesfai, a representative from Ministry of Health for her part, expressed that the ministry will keep on working jointly with partners to advance the service delivery of health facilities in the country. It is disclosed on the occasion that Intra Health International enables health workers to better serve communities in need in more than 100 countries around the world. Nigerian Obabi Aisha Ajibola receives World Muslima 2013 crown in the beauty contest where Muslim women participants are judged on non-conventional beauty. Tegesan Nesa has more from Reuters. An array of colorful clay contestants, all abiding by Muslim dress code, strutted along a runway in the Indonesian capital of Jakarta on Wednesday for the final of the third World Muslima contest, where Nigerian Opa B. A. Aisha Ajibola walked away with a crown. The contest, exclusive to Muslim female participants, saw 20 finalists compete for the title with judge scoring them not on conventional beauty but on how well they recited the Holy Quran and their views on Islam. Ajipola, 21 years old, won 2,200 US dollar and a trip to Muslim holy city of Mecca and another to India. Coinciding with the Miss World 2030 pageant, coinciding with the Miss World 2030 pageant, which is also being hosted in Indonesia, the 2030 World Muslim Contest aims to empower women and present an alternative view of beauty to more internationally renowned Miss World. Founder Ika Shanti, a former TV news anchor woman, said World Muslim does not intend to compete with Miss World. It is not against Miss World, but against pornography, against the sexual appeal in front of the children. So. Women should be well empowered, highly appreciated, and then also well educated. That's the issue. If you, if you want to uh, to reach the MDG's goal for human being and our women, we have to touch Muslim women because the contribution of um, property and also uh, and, uh, empowerment is come from Muslim world. Organizers of the 2030 World Muslim Contest hope their competition proposed a peaceful alternative to protest on recent street demonstration against Miss World. Earlier this month, thousands of demonstrators took the street in Jakarta, where some held signs to express their opposition against the contest. For the first time this year, World Muslim accepted foreign participants to compete alongside locals. Ahead of final round, at least 500 contestants competed in online rounds to reach finals, including participants from Bangladesh, Iran, Malaysia, and Nigeria. 